Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, DC4, he says goodbye to Raider Nation, officially putting a bow on his Raiders career. That and a lot more. It's all coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, Friday, January 13th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a Raider. Pillaging just for fun. Welcome in, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Locked On Raider podcast free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Thanks to my man Ari. He's doing a great job each and every day making sure we're up on YouTube. You can always check it out, subscribe to it, give it a minute, give it 30 minutes, whatever the case may be. We definitely appreciate that. Today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast is being brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. It helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On. NFL. I'll tell you a lot more about them later on in the show. And Raider Nation, the day came on Thursday where uh, officially pretty much put the bow on Derek Carr's Raider career. It's been a lot of conversation ever since he got sat down following the Christmas Eve Pittsburgh Steelers loss that, well, maybe because of what happened with Jimmy G that, you know, maybe he ends up returning to the silver and black. Maybe they're not able to move on from the offseason. They decide to bring him back. Well, pretty much that came to a close on Thursday. First, Thursday morning, I saw the tweet from Ian Rappaport from NFL Network saying, Sources, the Raiders will begin the process of evaluating the trade market for quarterback Derek Carr as they prepare for a decision on their quarterback for the future. This points to the possibility of Carr, who holds a no-trade clause, and will be part of the process, leaving the organization. So that was the first tea leave that broke early on Thursday morning. And then Field Yates from ESPN actually tweeted out, uh, if a team were to trade for Derek Carr, here is what it would owe him on his current deal, 2023. $32.9 $32.9 million base salary plus $100,000 workout bonus equals a $33 million cap hit. 2024, $41.9 million base salary plus $100,000 workout bonus equals a $42 million cap hit. And then 2025, $41.2 million base salary plus $100,000 workout bonus equals $41.3 million cap hit. So that was from Field Yates from ESPN on Twitter, just basically breaking down what the current contract looks like for Derek Carr. And so then you knew that, okay, the Raiders, as Josh McDaniel said on Monday following his, or during his uh, season end up presser that, Hey, the first conversation we're going to have is about the quarterback position. We're going to get, sit down with the quarterback and decide what to do. Obviously that being Derek Carr. So a lot of people say, well, Q, why would any team trade for Carr when they have that kind of, that kind of uh, a cap hit right there in a contract uh, situation? Well, and why would Derek Carr want to help out the Raiders in getting, uh, you know, draft capital in return when they're basically shutting the door on D.C.? And the thing about it is that's a pretty decent contract, right? That's not an over-the-top amount of money uh, for a quarterback, a starting quarterback in the NFL. And on top of that, it's also money that Derek Carr might not be able to get on the open market. Now, if his agent and company think that, hey, we can go out there and sign with somebody after the Raiders release him and get more money than that, then maybe they'll just kind of force the issue and say, no, won't accept the trade there. No, won't accept the trade there. Just go ahead and release me and I'll go sign elsewhere, you know, and be be free to go. But I think just gut feeling, you know, this is nothing that sources have told me or anything like that. You know, I'm not a sources type guy that he's going to try to cooperate with the team, try to get some kind of a trade and try to get that contract because it's a pretty decent contract. And now a lot of people will look at, okay, well, $42 million cap hit, $41.3 million, That's a whole lot of money. The thing about it is, the reality of it is, there's about $40 million or so, a little bit over $40 million, that's like fully guaranteed, right? And then that $42 million cap hit, of course, we all know, can be negotiated and could be, you know, moved around. And you know how, uh, you know, contracts are restructured all that time, all the time. So a team that really wants him at a quarterback position can make that happen. So if you're a Raider fan and you're trying to uh, hope and, and keep reading, you know, hoping that a, a contract extension is going to or not contract extension, but a trade's going to come up, you have to hope that, you know, three or four teams want to get in on the Derek Carr bidding war. And because he has a no trade clause, there's actually four teams that he would approve. So basically how it's been broken down to me is his agent probably gave the Raiders a list of teams that he is not willing to go to, which is a much longer list than the, the list of teams that he would go to. So then the Raiders will try to reach out to those organizations and see what's up. And his agent will reach out to those agents and see what's up and see if it can, uh, you know, if they can make something happen. And of course there's a February 15th date. That date is something that's very uh, important. 
That's three days after the Super Bowl gets wrapped up. The Raiders have to make a decision. If they find a trade partner, it could be announced before the new league year starts, which is in March. It could be announced before that. But it just obviously can't be made official until the new league year starts. So what they would do is if they find a trade partner and everyone agrees to what the conversation is going to be, everything is good, uh, they could push that date that they have set at February 15th. They could push that back to like March 16th. And then the Raiders could make the trade official on, on March 15th when the new league year starts. And then all those guarantees and all that other stuff kicks in so the Raiders wouldn't be stuck with that. Problem is, if they come up with that agreement and every side decides that, yeah, this is what we're going to do, the Raiders also have to hope that that team that's going to be training for Derek Carr decides that they're not going to bail out. If they bail out of the situation at the last minute, the Raiders could be stuck. So uh, it's one of those situations. I was talking to Vinny Bossignor on my uh, radio show on, on Thursday, and he said basically uh, what the Raiders need to hope for is that Derek Carr is willing to push that date from February 15th to March 15th. If they're or for March 16th, if they're able to do that, then he could see that a, a trade being done uh, that the Raiders would be able to move Derek to a team and get some compensation back. If he's not willing to move that date, then there's a good chance the Raiders are just going to have to release him. So that's going to be something to pay attention to as we move forward, looking at the whole Derek Carr situation. Now, he did uh, go to go to Twitter and Instagram following uh, the, the the tweet that uh, Ian Rappaport put out there and really made it official, like really basically put the nail in the coffin. Said, Raider Nation, it breaks my heart. I didn't get an opportunity to say goodbye in person. We certainly have been on a roller coaster in our nine years together. From the bottom of my heart, I'm so grateful and appreciative of the years of support you gave me and my family. Uh, we had our share of both heartbreaking moments and thrilling game-winning drives and it always felt like you were there next to me. It's especially hard to say goodbye because I can honestly say that I gave you everything I had every single day in season and in the off season. It certainly wasn't perfect, but I hope that I was able to leave you with more than a few great memories as Raider fans. He also goes on to say, thank you to the city of Oakland for taking us in. Thank you to the city of Las Vegas for allowing us to proudly call you home. Thank you to the organization, my teammates, all my coaches, staff, and everyone that helped me these last nine years in those two buildings. Thank you to all the Raider Nation that supported, encouraged, pushed, and uplifted me at different times along this journey. Raider Nation truly is special. I once said that if I'm not a Raider, I would rather be at home, and I meant that, but I never envisioned it ending this way. That fire burning inside of me to win a championship still rages. A fire no man could extinguish, only God. So I look forward to a new city and a new team who, no matter what the circumstances, will get everything I have. Winning a championship is what I've always wanted and what I'll continue to work towards. God bless you all. With love, DC4. So that was the statement right there he put out on Instagram, and then it eventually made its way to Twitter, and that's when I saw it. And so uh, that let it be known that Derek is not returning to the Silver and Black. That basically said, farewell, Raider Nation. Of course, he did it with class. There was no uh, thought that he wasn't going to do it with class. I mean, that's what he's always been since he's been with the Raiders since they drafted him in 2014. So not a big surprise there, but that was the farewell from Derek Carr. And we'll talk about his nine-year career coming up in segment number two. I have one more little nugget I wanted to get to here, though, in segment number one, and that's from Jeremy Fowler from ESPN. He actually tweeted out late on uh, Wednesday night, Patrick Graham appears to be safe as a defensive coordinator for the Raiders. Said indications remain that Raiders will move forward with defensive coordinator Patrick Graham per sources. Some hot seat talk surfaced, but the Raiders were depleted on defense and planned for upgrades. And I say this. You need a lot of upgrades. There needs to be a lot of upgrades. We've talked a lot about the defensive side of things when it comes to the Raiders. They need to upgrade that defense in a major, major way. Upgrade all levels, defensive line, linebackers, uh, the secondary. It all needs to be upgraded for Patrick Graham to be able to go ahead and and execute his scheme the way he wants it to. Uh, I had someone call in my radio show on Thursday and say, do you think the Raiders would be in the playoffs if they had a top 10 defense? And I was like, hell yes. (laughs) <laughs> right? I know there were some games where the offense didn't show up, but if they had a top 10 defense, and I'm not saying that's where they got to be, but if they had a top 10 defense, absolutely I think that they would be in the playoffs right now. But clearly they do not have a top 10 defense, and that's something that they need to work on. Coming up in segment number two, the stability that Derek Carr brought. We'll kind of go over the nine-year career of D.C. We'll talk about the numbers, uh, as many games he played, I mean games he started, overall record, and again, just the stability he brought to that position, showing a little bit of appreciation for Derek Carr. 2014 to 2022. Before we get to that, though, I do have a couple sponsors I'd like to tell you about, including the title sponsor, which is LinkedIn Jobs. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. 
LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your posts in front of the most qualified candidates. Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and for free. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicant based on your job qualifications all on one platform. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I also want to tell you about Built Bar, and I've been telling you about Built Bar for a le- very long time, and if you're looking for a delicious treat, you don't want all the fat and calories. You got to go try a Built Bar. They've got everything you need, and they've got so many different options. I think that's the best thing about Built Bar is that you're not married to just one style of bar. They've got so many different flavors. They've got so many different styles. They've got granola bars. I mean, in the Built Bar Puffs where uh, those have marshmallows in it. Uh, they have the granola bars. They've got just about anything that you want. Of course, they've got the OGs, and they're 100% real chocolate. They're great tasting, uh, and they're good for you. Uh, they got different flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. Uh, they got they got flavors that only have 30 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. I mean, there's a lot to like about Built Bar. you got to check out the website like I do each and every day, built.com. And if you don't want to order online, you don't have to. The beautiful thing is I'm here in Las Vegas. If I want – I could just drive into Smith's and get hooked up. They got a four-bar bo- four bar box of cookies and cream, coconut puffs, salted caramel, brownie batter puffs. That's at Smith's. If you're close to a Sam Club, you can run in and grab a 13-bar box with uh, their hit flavors, brownie batter, churro. And, well, if you do that, you could definitely thank me later. But if you are ordering online, and you can order online, go to Built.com. Use that promo code LOCKEDON15, all one word. You'll save 15% off your order as well. So they got multiple ways to buy online. Built.com, or you can roll into Smith's, you can roll into Sam's Club and get hooked up today. Built Bars, and check out Built.com. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to show a little appreciation to Derek Carr. And I've said this many times on the podcast, going back many, many years, before I was ever here in Las Vegas when I was still in Central Texas doing the podcast from a distance. And a lot of people have been ready to move on from Derek Carr for a very long time, and I'm okay with that. That's all right. I mean, he's been a guy that's been a, a st- stable force with the Raiders. He hasn't won a lot of games. Some of that's on him. Some of that's on the organization, you know, but he's been there, right, since they drafted him in 2014. So he brought stability to the organization. So I'll always appreciate his efforts. And you could appreciate someone's efforts who let, let it all on the line, and it just wasn't good enough, right? I mean, you could always want more. You could always say, hey, you know what? I appreciate that employee, but – you know, I just, I just need to upgrade. You know, it's been a long time. They've been, done some good things, but I need to continue to, to get better. I need to grow my brand. And that's where the Raiders are right now. And Mark Davis, the owner, has trusted this new staff with Dave Ziegler, Champ Kelly, and Josh McDaniels to say, okay, it is time to upgrade my brand and make what I have better. And, yes, there was such a, a, a revolving door from the quarterback position when, when Rich Gannon stopped playing to when Derek Carr got drafted in 2014. And so for a lot of people, a lot of people only know Derek Carr as their, as their quarterback, right, or as the Raiders quarterback. That's all they know. Like, you know, my kids, they were born before Derek Carr got drafted, but when they really got invested in the Raiders, guess who the quarterback was? Derek Carr. So that's really all they know, right? I mean, I could go back. Obviously, I go back way farther than just Derek Carr, but – for the most part, I mean, he's been the quarterback that has been the guy for the majority of the time that I've been watching. I mean, look, there was some stability there, obviously, with Rich Gannon when he joined the team in 99. But that was like four years of stability. Matter of fact, I got the, I got the list right here. Let me go over it real quick. Rich Gannon joined the team in 1999. All the way through 2002, he played every, every game. 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, all 16 games he played each of those years. That's a nice four-year run. Then all of a sudden, things got a little squirrely. In 2003, Rich Gannon played in only seven games. Rick Meyer, remember him? He played in eight games. Marcus Tuiasasopo, he was on the tier team for years, but he only played in one game in 2003. 2004, oh, they're going to bring in someone else. Rich Gannon played in three games because he was, you know, coming back from injury. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, that's all right. They brought in Kerry Collins. He's going to play the rest of the way. So he played 13 games. Oh, well, Kerry Collins is going to ride with him in 2005. He played 15 games. Marcus Tuiasasopo, boom, he got back into another game. 2006, Andrew Walter, remember they drafted him. He was going to be the next big thing, right? He was going to be the guy. He was going to be the next Joe Montana because he was a big, tall, strong guy with a big arm, and he wore number 16 
Yeah, that didn't work out. Remember Aaron Brooks brought him in as a free agent from uh, from the Saints. Oh, well, the Saints were a bad organization. He's going to get to the Raiders and be the guy. Nope, not so much. 2007, you want to really get free? You want to really go on the merry-go-round? How about 2007? How about Josh McCown for nine games? Dante Culpepper, remember him coming off of ACL surgery, a bad ACL surgery? I think it was, what, ACL and maybe MCL as well? Remember when he had the old touchdown against or the, the three-touchdown game against Miami and he pointed at his knee like his knee was fine? Yeah, it wasn't. But McCown had nine games. Culpepper had six. Jamarcus Russell, remember Jamarcus Russell? Number one overall pick. Remember, he's going to be the end-all, be-all. Yeah, I fell for the banana in the tailpipe. He played in one game. 2008, oh, that's all right. Jamarcus is going to be the guy. He's got some seasoning under his belt now. He's got the big arm. Get those 70 yards from a knee. Again, I fell for the banana in the tailpipe. He played 15 games. Andrew Walter, he came in for one game. Oh, don't worry. Jamarcus is still around. 2009, nine more games. Finally, sit him down. Bruce Gratkowski takes over four games. Charlie Fry played in three games. All this is going on between Rich Gannon and Derek Carr. All these names that I've mentioned. Oh, don't worry. 2010, it'll be a little bit different. Jason Campbell's there. He played in 12 games. Bruce Gratkowski, four games. And we all know what happened with Jason Campbell in 2011, right? He played in six games, got injured. Remember, and then Hugh Jackson decided to go give up a first-round pick for Carson Palmer. Oh, but in between Campbell and, and Palmer, there was Kyle Bowler. Remember Kyle, Kyle Bowler? Remember Kyle Bowler that went to play for the Ravens? Yeah, he played one game. Carson Palmer, he played nine games. I hated – you know what? I, Carson Palmer has a bad rap for me, from me because Hugh Jackson gave up a first-round pick. I never forgave Hugh Jackson, and I like Hugh Jackson. If I saw him in the street right now, and I've had him on the podcast. Had him on, if, if I saw him in the street, I'd shake his hand. I mean, I, I, I thought Hugh was a good dude. But that was a terrible move, giving up a first-round pick for Carson Palmer. So 2011, he plays nine games. 2012, he plays 15 games. Then, then the Savior's coming. I got it. Terrell Pryor. Raiders pick him up in the supplemental draft. He can run. He's mobile. He's got a big arm. He's kind of brash. You know, he got in trouble in school. So, I mean, he's the, the, he's the body of a Raider, right? Yeah, not so much. He played in one game, started one game in 2012. 2013, started nine games. Then, Matt McGloin, remember? The Red Rifle from Penn State. He's there. Oh, wait, Matt Flynn. Matt Flynn, the guy that they, uh, you know, they, they, they got from, what, Seattle? When Seattle picked him up after uh, he had one huge, massive game with Green Bay that didn't mean anything, and then Seattle signed him to a big contract, and the Raiders said, hey, we'll take you off your, off his, his, your hands. I know you got Russell Wilson. We'll take Matt Flynn. Matt Flynn was terrible. He started one game in 2013. And then, and then, Derek Carr gets drafted in the second round 2014. And do you remember who the quarterback was going to be if he didn't win in that fourth preseason game against Seattle and Oakland during the Dennis Allen era? You know the starting quarterback was supposed to be? Never really made the field? Matt Schaub. Remember Matt Schaub? Remember Mr. Pick 6 when he was in Houston? He was so bad that the Houston, there was a Houston restaurant that sold burgers that came up with the Pick 6 burger because of Matt Schaub. And the Raiders signed him. But thank goodness they drafted Derek Carr in the second round of 2014. And he was Mr. Consistent. 16 games his rookie year. 16 games the next year. 15 games in 2016. We know he broke his ankle Christmas Eve against the Colts at the Oakland Coliseum. I was there. Little Q was there. Little Q were there. Mama Q was there. We were all there for that one. They went into the playoffs. Uh, Matt McGloin started one game that season uh, against Denver. They lost. And then they went into the playoffs with Connor Cook going up against the Texans as a rookie and lost. Oh, by the way, Connor Cook, who they drafted, Never started a game outside the playoffs. Uh, 2017, Derek Carr was back. He played 15 games. EJ Manuel started one. 2018, Derek Carr, 16 games. 2019, 16 games. 2020, 16 games. 2021, 17 games. And then this past year, 2022, 15 games. So at least you knew what you were getting from Derek Carr. Was it always pretty? No. Could he have done better? Sure. But, man, just to know that that carousel of quarterbacks was not going on while D.C. was there. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing that they're moving on. I think that it's good for both sides, that he can go and get a fresh start, and the Raiders can too. But for his efforts with the Raiders, Derek Carr, 2014-22, to 2022, played 142 games, started 142 games. 163, lost 79. That's a 444 winning percentage. It's just not good enough. You know, again, not all of it's his fault. Not all of it's the Raiders' fault. It's a combination. Kenny Stabler has the highest, no, he doesn't have the highest winning percentage. Sorry, Daryl LaMonica, the Mad Bomber, rest in peace. 67 to 74, 95 games played, 84 games started, 62 wins, 16 losses, 6 ties, 774 win percentage. Kenny Stabler played in 137 games, started 96, 169, lost 26, tied 1, 724 win percentage. 
really, honestly, when you look at the list of the quarterbacks from Derek Carr, Kenny Stabler, Daryl LaMonica, Rich Gannon, Tom Flores, Jim Plunkett, Jay Strader, Jeff Hostetler, and Mark Wilson, from me, my, my, my run when I really got invested in the Raiders, I was the end of Jim Plunkett and the beginning of Jay Strader. So I had it bad, right? Jim Plunkett, the end of his career, was, was cool. I'm good with that. Jay Schrader, we all know that that was hit or miss. Jeff Hostetler, he provided some stability for a little while. You know, he, play, he, he played in 55 games, started 55 games, was 33 and 22. That was from 93 to 96. And Mark Wilson, remember Mark Wilson? Uh, he was from 80 to 87. He was all in between that too. So it was like, what? Jim Plunkett, um, yeah, like really Jay Schrader. The end, of Jay, the end of Jim Plunkett and the beginning of Jay Schrader with a little Mark Wilson sprinkled in there. Uh, Jeff Hostetler, of course. And then... Well, we all know, like I said, Rich Cannon from 99 to 2004, and we know how the list goes on from there. But that's really, that's really where it was from here. And look, Derek has a, lot of, uh, he has a lot of records for the Raiders, but he also played in the most games, 142 games played, the most out of any starting quarterback for the Silver and Black. So, look, the end of the era is here. Uh, I just appreciate what he brought to the table. I could thank him, uh, even though he frustrated me at times. I know he frustrated Raider Nation at times. I know some people are probably like, yeah, the hell with him. Don't like him as a guy. That's fine. Or don't like him as a quarterback. That's fine. But you have to respect what he was able to bring to the table, at least what he attempted to do with the Raiders. There's nothing more than he wanted to do than win a championship. It just didn't happen. He didn't make it to the promised land, but he sure as hell tried to get there. So that's all I got for you for seven number two. Just a little bit of appreciation for what Derek Carr brought to the, the organization in the time that he was there starting in 2014 and getting wrapped up in 2022. Your calls and texts are coming up in segment number three. What's on your mind? 702, 707, excuse me, 654-4693. That's the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line. Let's get to those right after I tell you about betonline.net, your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every pro and amateur league out there. Of course, football. Got the playoffs coming up this weekend. Uh, Basketball is going on, college and pro. If you love sports podcasts, and we know that you do, you can find those as well at betonline.net. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information on. All you got to do is head to the website today on your laptop or mobile device to learn about more. Betonline.net. That is where the game starts. Here we go, Raider Nation, segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and text straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's go ahead and start things off with Windy City Raider. He's calling to talk about Derek Carr, but not if he should be on the team or not, but thinks about his time with the Silver and Black and what he thinks of it. Here he is, Windy City Raider. Hey, Q, it's Windy City Raider. Thanks for everything you do with the podcast. It is indeed my first listen each and every day. Just calling with some thoughts on Derek Carr. I'm not going to try to litigate whether this guy should still be on the team. He's not going to be on the team, but now that he's leaving, I've just been thinking about his tenure as a Raider, and in some ways this guy seems to me like the consummate Raider, the ultimate Raider, but in other ways he seems to me <laughs> to be not really a Raider at all. Uh, when you think about what this franchise is built on, which is just win, baby. And Jim Plunkett is the reason – why I'm a Raiders fan, because Jim Plunkett it was the reason why my dad was a Raiders fan. And growing up in southeastern Ohio, we cheered for the Raiders because of Jim Plunkett and because of his story of supposedly being this washout, this complete disappointment from Heisman to um, to the Patriots and not having success there and then winning two Super Bowls and becoming the only quarterback with two Super Bowl wins who is not in the Hall of Fame, which, while well, that's a huge slight on Plunkett, it also feeds into the to the kind of Raiders charisma, the outsider mystique. And the idea is just win, baby. It's not just pass for 35,000 career yards, break every franchise record we have, and have two playoff losses to show for it in nine years, baby. And, of course, first loss, not Derek's fault. He wasn't there. But it's something I think about a lot, and I – We've had, what, two winning seasons in the last two decades. For this franchise, that should be unacceptable, but it's become the norm. And whoever we bring in for quarterback, we need to just win, baby. We need to get back to that. We need to get back to that whole outlaw mystique. So Derek Carr, Cosmic Raider, but also – yeah, and I like Carr. I have no problem with Carr. I've defended Carr. His whole career, I still like Carr. But instead of crying at the podium, which is fine, I'm not saying the guy shouldn't be emotional, but instead of doing these outward things like crying at the podium and telling us, telling us how much you want to be a Raider and that you're going to retire if you can't be a Raider, instead of talking about it, I want somebody to show up and have 
80 career touchdowns, 81 career interceptions, but they won above all else, baby. Thank you so much for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And it's funny, man, the timing of that, right? That was a, a call that probably should have got on the show on Thursday, but just didn't have enough time to get to it. And then all of a sudden we find out uh, all the information about uh, DC and he puts out the, you know, the goodbye letter to Raider Nation on social media. So, uh, yeah, I mean, thank you so much again. Uh, after you broke it down, especially talking about Jim Plunkett and his story, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a great one. You know, and I say all the time, I respect Derek Carr for what he was and what he was trying to be. He always wanted to win. It just never happened. So, uh, again, some of it was his fault. Some of it was not. But whoever the next quarterback is, in my opinion, needs to be an absolute dude, like a real deal game changer. And, like, I'm not saying – I don't know. Whoever's going to be the long-term solution at quarterback, I think needs to be a game changer. The Raiders need to find their Patrick Mahomes. And I know that that's easy to say, but they need to find someone that can be, you know, a, a, a gunslinger and a, and a big-time quarterback. You know, a Patrick Mahomes, a Justin Herbert, a Josh Allen, a Joe Burrow. They need to find a dude. That's what I'm basically trying to say. I know Patrick Mahomes just don't grow on trees, but they need to find a dude. Whoever the long-term solution is going to be, that's what they need to do. But thank you so much for that call. I do appreciate you. Next up, got a text from King Raider in L.A. It says, hey, Q, it's King Raider from L.A. Just trying to process his gut punch of a move. I just want to thank Carr. He made it hopeful to believe in the Raiders. He made us proud to rock silver and black because we knew there was always a chance of winning with him. Now my thoughts from my call I made earlier have changed. If we trade Carr to one of these three teams ahead of us that needs a quarterback, I say go for Stroud or Caleb. I still don't buy into seeing Tuck Rule Brady in our colors or A-Rod or Jimmy G, especially Jimmy. He is a total downgrade. Best wishes to D.C. He'll succeed somewhere else. He didn't fail us. The organization failed him. Hashtag Ra Raider Nation for life. That's from King Ra Raider in L.A. And I'll say this. I won't. I won't say that the organization failed him completely because they paid him a whole lot of money, right? I mean, they did leave him the, the, as the quarterback for nine years, right? I mean, a lot of times when you're not winning like they want you to win, regardless whose fault you think it is, they don't keep you in that position. So, I mean, there was some fault of his. He wasn't fault-free, right? I mean, he was a good quarterback, but he had his issues. And I know he had his issues because everyone from Raider Nation would call and text and leave his issues on the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line for the last four or five years, <laughs> right? So it's funny that so many people that would be angry at Carr now are also so angry at the organization because they're moving on. At some point, it's okay, um, you know, to to want to upgrade. That's okay. And um, we had my man, Akeem, in Oakland back in the day, you know, years ago, used to call in and be like, I get it. He stabilized the position, but I want an upgrade. He started saying that about three or four years ago. He doesn't even call into the show anymore. But, I mean, he's been saying it for a while. There's been a lot of the Raider Nation that's been ready to move on from Derek Carr. It's just this staff. Dave Ziegler, Champ Kelly, Josh McDaniels have finally had the stones to move on from him. So there's that. As far as trading up or, or going to get one of the quarterbacks, Caleb Williams isn't available till next season, right? Next next draft, 2024 draft. Uh, now, C.J. Stroud, he's a guy that intrigues me. Uh, Bryce Young obviously intrigues me, but I think he's just really small. Um, Will Levitz, I know he's got the tools. He just is coming off a rough season there at Kentucky, but I think that he could probably get it done. He's big. He's got a big arm. But, man, the deal about it is if you draft a quarterback, especially if you trade up to go get him, you better get it right. You've got to get it right. I really kind of like C.J. Stroud a lot, but we'll see, right? The way he played against uh, Georgia, man, I was, I was fired up about that, but I don't want to be a prisoner of the moment as well. They, those guys know what they're looking for. If C.J. Stroud is that guy, so be it. If not, then, you know, we'll see. Um, I know that there's other guys – that could be available maybe a little bit later. I'm not too sure. But there's, there's a lot of questions that Dave Ziegler as a GM have to answer, and I'm glad that's not on my plate to make that call. But thank you so much for that. Of course, you know we'll get into plenty of draft talk later on. But uh, right now it's kind of just, you know, still kind of fresh. So thank you so much, to, uh, King Raider, for that text. Next up, got a call from Proto. He's calling to talk about the end of the era with Derek Carr and why he's glad that it's coming to a close. Here he is, Proto. Hey, yo, Q. Uh, name's Proto. I'm a uh, first-time caller, long-time listener. I only have two things to say. Uh, firstly, I'm actually kind of glad this uh, Derek Carr thing is over. Um, I've actually I've never been a car hater. I think he's done great for the organization. But I think we've been saying it for the past at least 40 years that it's it was about time for this uh, for both people to part ways. And I'm actually glad that it finally happened. And I'm still I'm still going to remain a car uh, car person like i'm not gonna hate car for this however two things are gonna make me dislike car out of this whole situation one is actually gonna be because of david carr if david carr com continues to just drag the raiders all over tv saying every negative thing that he can about us 
acting like we did not give Derek Carr every opportunity to win games. I'm going to decide Derek Carr for that. Secondly, and this is important, if Derek Carr does not allow the Raiders to trade him for picks, I'm actually going to become a Derek Carr hater because there is no way you're going to convince me that the Raiders did not give him every, every opportunity to be a winner in the, uh, in the organization. We gave him Devonta Adams. We gave him uh, offensive weapons, and he played badly. Let's just face the truth. This year, he played badly with all the weapons. Yes, the old line wasn't perfect. Yes, the defense wasn't perfect. But if you're going to get paid $40 million a year, you need to be able to win with things not being perfect. That's what separates $40 million quarterbacks from those who get paid 30 or 20 million. And I think right now Derek Carr is a 20 million dollar quarterback, maybe 30, but definitely not a 40 million dollar quarterback. So I think he needs to let us trade him for picks. If he doesn't, I will become a car hater instantly. That is, so that's all I got to say. Thanks for listening. Um, have a wonderful day. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And thanks for being a first time caller as well. And I agree with you, man. I'm not a car hater. I'm not at all. I've, I've been a big supporter of him, and I'm not going to say a bad word about him, but you know, it's just time to move on. And, and the way his brother is trying to drag the team now all of a sudden, and I get it. He's big bro. Big bro is going to go out there and defend his little brother. But it's so funny seeing how quickly David Carr has changed because, man, he's been on NFL Network for years singing the praises of the Raiders and how great they're going to be, this, that, and the other, right? And, I, again, I get it. He's big bro. So that's that. The one thing that will make me really angry at Carr, and it won't even be Carr's fault, is if we get into next season and all of a sudden, like, every time there's a game or something goes wrong, Derek Carr wouldn't have done that. Uh, that also, you know what I mean? Like, Raider Nation starts calling in, and I don't need, mean necessarily to the podcast. I just mean in general, like even the radio show. And, oh, well, if the Raiders still had Derek Carr, they would have done Like, I don't want it to linger, all right? I mean, it's like you can't you can't get in a, in a fight with your current and be like, well, if that was my ex, it wouldn't be. You know what I mean? Like, man, once you make that break, just make that break. I just I have a feeling, just gut feeling tells me a lot of Raider Nation is going to keep going back to the well all season long. Oh, Derek Carr, look what Derek Carr's doing. Oh, look what Derek Carr's team did. Oh, Derek Carr, you know what I mean? Like, I just, and maybe I'll be wrong. I hope I'm 100% wrong, but I do feel like that that's going to be a narrative that we're going to hear the next season. Or if the Raiders win and they have a good defense and a better offensive line, people are going to say, see, Derek could have done that if you had given him a defense. You know what I mean? Like, just let it go. You know, appreciate the man for what he did, what he brought to the table, but L-I-G it, man. Just let it go. Uh, up next, I got a text from Hondo in the 530. He says, hey, Q, it's always good to hear from you during the offseason or during the regular season. Always a great program. About the Crosby snub. snub. Could it be that Crosby is an old school Raider and just doesn't G-A-F? You know what that means. <laughs> he belongs with the Raiders teams of the 70s when players held grudges and hit certain players with a little something extra. There's a big money fraternity amongst the NFL players that frowns on players like Crosby. He's a mani maniac. So one time he gets a little extra when he slaps Mahomes hard on the head when he's knocking him down, stuff like that. Party foul. Doesn't he realize who Mahomes is? The new face of future of the NFL. Referees even protect him. All Max cares about is that dude has the ball. So what? If other players don't want him to be in the popular club, Hondo in the 530. Thank you so much for that text. And yeah, Max Crosby has a little bit of that old school Raider to him. Uh, you know, and that hit that he had on Mahomes uh, on uh, on Saturday uh, to wrap up the season and got that personal foul penalty. Uh, he actually was talking about it in the locker room. It was funny. We talked to him for a great uh, length of time, and you heard it here on the podcast. And then after we were done, uh, he talked to – he said something to one of the reporters in the locker room and said, that uh, that was a BS call. That wasn't no ref in the, the, uh, the quarterback. And, he, I mean, he said it. So he he really – you know, he, he's – He's very prideful in what he does. And I do think that that him being, you know, snubbed from that list. And, look, it doesn't necessarily have to be a snub. Uh, Miles Garrett has been in the in the club, as you mentioned, for a while. And, of course, Nick Bosa has been fantastic. Uh, so it's not really a, a major snub. But I guarantee you he's going to look at it as a snub and say, you know what? All right, I'm not on the first team with what I did. Okay, let me go ahead and, and, and prove to him that, I, okay, I need some more sacks. Fine, let me go get some more sacks. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's kind of the approach that I think – that he'll take next year, and he'll just use it for motivation. That's what the greats do. Greats use stuff like that as motivation. So thank you so much for that text. I do appreciate you. Uh, got time for one more call. We'll take it from Raider Izzy. He's calling in to float an idea that he has that he actually believes nobody will agree with. But here he is anyway. Here's Raider Izzy. What up, Q? Raider Izzy. Um, no, I called a couple times before, and my my phones were my phone was all over the place. I'm sorry. I wanted to try to get this in within three minutes, but I so I just have a thought here. I wanted to run by, and I. I'm well aware nobody's going to agree with this, and I know that I'm crazy, but I, I really want to get this thought out there to, to get your opinion. After a season like we just had where the games 
you know, the game, the Jaguar game, the Steeler game, the Ram game, and the Cardinal game. Those four games combined, our offense scored nine points combined in the second half of those four games. I have given this defense a lot of grief, myself personally. I know we all have, but I'm only going to speak for myself. I've given a ton of grief to this defense for years. But our offense scored nine points combined against those four teams. And this is a year that we're seeing Daniel Jones, Geno Smith, and Brock Purdy as the quarterback of, of quarterbacks for three teams in the NFC. All right? Let's keep this in mind, okay? Let's, let's say we trade Carr and we get a second and a fourth. Let's just say that. We restructure Colton Miller and we cut Bolden. That puts us around $63 million and we have 11 draft picks. 63 in cap space, 11 draft picks. Now, we re-sign Jacobs. We re-sign Stidham. Here's where I'm going nuts. This is my honest opinion, and again, I know no one's going to agree with this. Me, personally, I'm re-signing Stidham as the starter and also drafting a quarterback to, to, to basically learn under him. He knows the system better than any quarterback in the world. He knows the system. I'm not saying he's the best quarterback. I know he's not. I'm rolling with him. And then I'm going out and making another splash move, and I'm trading for DeAndre Hopkins. Again, I know no one's going to agree with this. I get it. Hopkins, Adams, Waller, Renfro, Jacobs. Sidham can succeed with that. Once that's all done, money-wise, basically you're stuck with about $35 million left in cap space. And I say stuck with, that's still good. And you still have, after trading for, after trading for you know, for D-Hop and all of that, you're still sticking with, Probably eight to nine draft picks. $35 million in nine draft picks, let's say, okay, to fix the defense, to at least be reasonable and get two two offensive linemen to help us out there, all right? A reasonable defense will win games with that offense. We do not need a world-beater defense. We just don't. That will get the job done. Those four games I mentioned, our offense scored nine points combined. We win those games, we're in the playoffs. That is all we need. Does Hopkins or does Devontae want that? I don't know. Again, just my opinion. That's what I would do. I know no one's going to agree with it. This is what I would honestly do, and I think that we're going to win games and make the playoffs next year. Love the show as always, bro. Later. Raider Izzy, thanks for the call, my man. Interesting thoughts. So you're rolling with Stidham. You're bringing in DeAndre Hopkins, a pair with Adams, Waller, Renfro. You're restructuring Colton Miller and releasing Brandon Bolden, re-signing Josh Jacobs, draft a quarterback to learn behind Stidham. Offensively, that could be a hell of an offensive attack, but I'll still say I don't know if, if – and I know you said Stidham could win with that. Uh, he probably can, but, I mean, you're still, you're still rolling the dice that all of a sudden Stidham's going to be super fantastic. And I know Brock Purdy's winning, and I know other guys are winning with what they have around them, especially if they have a strong defense and a, a solid running game. But I just don't know, man. You're putting a lot of uh, eggs in one basket that you could basically outscore everyone, and, and you're talking about only having a mediocre defense. Now, if you had a super solid defense, that would be different. But I just don't know. With only a mediocre defense, I don't know if that's going to get it done. Uh, there's just going to be days that you're off, right? And on those days that you're off, you're probably going to lose games because the defense can't hold a lead. So I don't know if they'd be comfortable with that. The offensive line still needs to be upgraded. Uh, it, just, it seems like there's a lot. And you said it. You didn't think anyone was going to agree with you. But, I mean, it's a hell of an idea. Maybe, you know, maybe someone else will agree with you. Maybe yeah, folks could chime in if they'd like to. 707 654 Four six nine three calls or texts. What do you think about Raider, Raider Izzy's idea? Do you think you can go all the way in on having a super, super powerful offense and having Jared Stidham as your trigger man and just having a mediocre defense? Or do you think you just need to go ahead and try to balance things out, upgrade the defense like I think, uh, go ahead and uh, you know attack the offensive line and have a veteran quarterback that you feel like, you know what, can win with this guy and can win with this guy right now. Well, thank you so much, Raider Izzy. I do appreciate you. And uh, that's going to do it, Raider Nation. That's all we got time for on today's show. That's all we got time for uh, for this week. So uh, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the playoff games. Of course, there's a playoff game on Monday as well. The Buccaneers against the Cowboys. Monday night football playoff style. Super wild card weekend. Should be a lot of fun. We'll be back on the podcast here on Monday as well. So uh, thank you so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Locked On Raider podcast free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Definitely appreciate everyone checking in and chiming in. Thanks to my man Ari at Ari Produces on Twitter. So until Monday, Raider Nation, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.